Hey lovelies, you're welcome to yet another episode of Girls Closet and guess what, this one is special in particular because we have a distinguished guest in the house, no other than presidential candidate 2019. Mrs. Eunice at Suichide. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to be amongst you today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So obviously you've seen this known faces and this known face again to it. So you know what? Let's just have this brief profiling of her and then we'll get back to the main issues. All right. So Eunice at Suichide is the founder and party leader of the duly registered National Interest Party NIP, a technology-driven political party designed to conduct all intra-party elections, congresses, and party primaries online. And to go further, Barrister Eunice, she's a solicitor of the Supreme Court of Nigeria, a solicitor of England and Wales, an international arbitrator, a management consultant, and an entrepreneur, most importantly. <laughs> <laughs> she hails from Enugu and is a proud mother of five. Yeah. Exactly. That that leaves us like whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yes, you can say that again. She's a woman of diverse languages. Eunice speaks fluent Igbo, Yoruba, German and English language. She has a working knowledge of French language and is now learning Hausa and Spanish. I, I wonder what next is gonna happen after that. <laughs> Maybe Mandarin. <laughs> She has visited at least 76 countries and over 130 cities in the world. She holds a black belt in Taekwondo and still trains to keep fit. Exactly. All right, last time, Miss Eunice is all and a passionate Nigerian with unwavering faith in the country and its people. It is for this reason that Miss Eunice offers herself to be elected president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Come. 2019. That was simple, short, and classic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Once again, you're welcome to Thank the show, you. Ma. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, you. and um, before we go further, I'd like to introduce the ladies in the house, of course. We've met them before. This is uh, Miss Funke. Hello, Hello okay. Nice to meet you. Pleasure, Ma. Yeah. And this is Mrs. Piola. Nice welcome. to meet you. Thank, Thank you so much. Okay, Thank and you. then I'm going to introduce myself. My oh. name is Benny. Hi, Benny. <laughs> 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 so we're going to be kicking off with a big question. As a woman, taking off the role of Buhari, that is taking off the role of the president's seat, how did that happen? What came about? How did that come about? And what is the drive? Why do I want Buhari's seat? Because the, the guy is not performing now. Is that not enough reason to want this seat? <laughs> anyway, um, I want to be president. I want to be president in Nigeria because... Um, I mean, when you look at our country from the, even before independence and after independence, we have not had the best of people leading us. We have not had great leaders and what that has cost for us is a, an economy that we cannot be proud of, a system and people and a miserable life, debts. Every day you are hearing Benue State, we are burying people, people are killing each other in the churches and, you know, it's just too much and I blame that on the quality of leadership we have. And then I've looked at myself and I said, okay, I have prepared for this position. I have actually taken the time to develop myself, whether in terms of career or in terms of work experience or family life. I've actually done a lot to put different kinds of experiences in myself. And then I want to now give it back and help the country start to recover from the pains of having bad leadership. So that's really the beginning and the end of the story. That's why I want to be president. I know I have what it takes to start healing this country, bring the people together that will help us get a government that would work for every one of us in Nigeria and those of us outside Nigeria as well. Okay, um, just before I give it out to the ladies, we have, you have about four contenders as women, females in the same race, you know, how yes. does that make you feel like? Are you threatened by it or that makes you No, I'm not threatened at all. You have to understand that I am the founder and national chairman of National Interest Party and we have a convention Monday, 20th of uh, August and we don't have anybody contending against me. I'm literally going to come out an unopposed presidential uh, candidate and that's just a week to go. Now, uh, Elisha Maide is with Drotoye in ANN. She may, she may not come out. Uh, Princess Fumilayo Adesoya Davis is in PDP. I don't see her coming out at all. There's no chance. 
Then there's um, Mrs. Remy, Remy, Remy Shonaya. Shonaya. And she's in Kowa when we have three men that are contesting for the same presidency with her. It's highly unlikely that she would emerge, but I do hope she does at least. She's done it before and she may already have better experience doing it. So she, she would be, I don't know, if she plays the game well, she'll probably be able to come out. But in my case, there's nobody opposing me. So I am the only female that is guaranteed to be at the presidential race in 2019 as we speak. Okay, the word guaranteed we take note of. <laughs> what are you from, Kai? Okay, I'll take from where you stopped. Yeah. You said you're the only female candidate guaranteed to be in the race. Mm -hmm. But the issue here is being in the race is not enough until mm -hmm. you get that position, you get mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So, are you not intimidated or any challenges on your way from like you're not part of any existing political party, not the, you know, Nigeria? Mm -hmm. yeah. No, existing no. in the sense that no, no, it no, is no. an existing political no, party. No, no. <laughs> it is, it is. It is and I am the founder and I'm the national uh, chairman. Uh, so what are you talking about? Okay. Existing <laughs> in the sense that not the normal, like the popular political party we know in Nigeria, which mm -hmm. is the All Progressive Congress, APC, and PDP. Mm -hmm. Like you're not coming out from either of the two parties. Mm -hmm. So what do you think is your chance? Okay. And it's not about running the race; it's about getting there. So what do you think? Is your chance okay now national interest party nip is a member of the cupp which is the coalition of united political parties and this is a coalition of 41 uh, associations and political parties so we have about 38 political parties and three non-political party groups in the same um group the uh, coalition of united parties okay. and now we are going to present only one consensus candidate and after you emerge from your party, which I will obviously emerge from NIP, I am going into a second primaries within the CUPP. Okay. My job now is to make sure that I beat all the guys in CUPP. And once I have floored all the guys in CUPP, everybody in CUPP with all their powerful structures and all their money, they are going to be backing me to the presidency. And that's how I will become the president in 2019. It's just strategy. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could say guaranteed, but let me leave it as hopefully. Um, okay, I guess we're yes. passing it to Biola. And the thing okay. is, she, okay. she, she sounded like sure, and she said, I want to beat those guys. But I have yes, to beat them. Guys. And then, no, seriously, no, seriously, when you look in terms of exposure, when you look in terms of understanding the problems of Nigeria and actually having true, real solutions to them, when you look in terms of integrity, you cannot call any FCC on my case. Now you cannot come and be disturbing my presidency because of EFCC or one ICPC nonsense things. I don't have all those problems. So the people I'm going to bring into the center to work for me or work with me rather are likely going to be people like me who EFCC cannot do anything to. If we have those kind of Nigerians leading the way, our journey is even freer than uh, who is that China? Forget about them. Ten years from now will be world power. That's what we really need in Nigeria. Get quality Nigerians with clean records in front of and the rest of us who follow will do great things in this country. Okay, let me, let me give it to Biela if I can. I think I'll be very brief with this. What does National Interest Party represent? National Interest Party is that party where the average Nigerian who has lived a clean life can come to and confidently run for office without favoritism. We don't have any godfatherism complex. Everybody in National Interest Party is equal. And the way we do our primaries, it's the direct primary system we use. So we don't have delegate system. If you join National Interest Party today and we have elections tomorrow, I can vote, you can vote, everybody can vote. So there's no way you will come now and then we will select some people and somebody will bribe them and buy their vote. We are just totally transparent, very free. Our nominations forms are free. The only thing you ever pay for a National Interest Party is for screening. And right now it's just 300k. So whatever position, presidency, governor, uh, House of Assembly, Senate, whatever you want to run for, the only money you have to look for is 300,000 to get screened. And after screening, you pass screening, you get your ticket. Unless you have many people in your area that are contesting too. And what we encourage our members to do is to discuss it amongst themselves, trying to do a gentleman kind of agreement amongst themselves. We look at your quality, we look at the quality of the other person. If you think the other person is better, then you say, okay, go, let me support you. But if both of you feel you are equal, that nobody should uh, uh, let, the, let go for the other person, then we do a primary for you. Every member will vote, and the person with the highest vote gets the ticket. So that's one thing we are offering in Nigeria. Whether you're a man, 
woman, young, old, it doesn't matter. All we're asking is that you do not have a bad record. There are conditions in the Constitution that tells you what exempts you from running for public office. We follow those rules. No bankruptcies, no uh, involvement with fraud, no dishonest behavior, no convictions, criminal convictions. Well, we follow those things. And if we check you against those things, you are fine. You get our ticket. Okay, well, let me quickly add this off that um, talking about Nigerian election politics, I want to ask the question like, as, as um, Nigeria, as a citizen, do we have the right political attitude? If yes or no, and at what point have we lost or gained that attitude? Political attitude? My dear, I, uh, I'm not, I cannot be judging Nigerians generally. We are just too many Nigerians. Some are great Nigerians, some are medium, some are horrible. I can't put everybody in the same class. So political attitude is a subjective matter. Some of us do have the right attitude, some of us don't. Can we improve? Yes. Do we want to improve? I don't know. All I hope is that, as especially people like me coming to the political arena, uh, people will start to think differently, will start to view our political landscape a little less uh, strictly PDP, APC, the way we do, and start to open our minds to all the other possibilities that are there for us. Okay, ma'am, can we take this attitude to the government aspect of it? Because now we're talking about the citizens. Mm -hmm. Now, do the government have the right political attitude, the ones we have? So Absolutely. No, they do not have the right political attitude. They do not have the right any attitude in short because they do everything wrong as far as I'm concerned. But then it's it's actually because of the system they have encouraged. You know, we haven't had a government that came there to work for the people. We've had governments that come there to work for themselves to service self-interest or interests of those that they feel uh, uh, they have to be biased for. We haven't had a government that has come to Nigeria to serve all of us and make sure that we all receive the dividends of democracy. And that's what we are missing. We need to put a government together that will truly be there to work for the people. And that's why I said, okay, the only thing, the only way to do it is to go in there and actually do it. And the best place to do it from is as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Okay, okay. Okay. As far as I'm concerned, the issue I think Nigerians outside are watching, they have the opinion that I think the problem we have in Nigeria is we think a particular political party would solve the problem. But I think that, that is where we got it wrong. I think it is not about a political party, it is about your person. It is about you coming into the government. That is why when you say, okay, this is in Nigeria for a call and the political party is NHIP. Mm -hmm. It's like it's one that we are not really familiar with. Okay, now I think Nigeria out there, they are even tired of say PDP, say APC. They are, they are particularly concerned about you as a person. Okay, now uh, you've brought a few things together in one sentence or a few sentences. But the important thing is you have to understand that it costs a lot of money to build the kind of structures that APC, PDP have managed to build over the years. So Nigerians know APC and PDP because they are literally everywhere. What we are doing at National Interest Party is trying to spend less but still get known everywhere. And it's one of the reasons we built a, a very digital political party. So everybody joins us online. All our elections are done online. I can sit in my living room and be in touch with everybody in all the 8,817 wards in Nigeria. Because at the end of the day, your structure is not how many offices you have. It is not how many cars you actually put on the road. It's actually about how many people are out there on your behalf and making the noise that needs to be made about you. So we do need money to mobilize these people. We do need money to ignite them, but we don't have it. But we are starting from where we, ha where we, where we can. And that's like to make sure that our website is working and our members are able to interact with each other within the website. And then once the money comes, you can mobilize them. Okay, you, this is your area. Make sure you get us 500 members here. Put XYZ in certain local government, arrange and train the party agents that Will work for us and protect our votes. By the time you are doing that in 8,817 local government area, you will probably be more popular than PDP and APC. But it's a gradual process. We just registered in January and we are like most of us, like you guys here, young people. I'm one of the oldest and I'm not even 40 yet. So 
Most of us don't even have jobs. We are like just piecing it together with the little we have, taking a lot of credit, selling our cars and houses and everything we can lay our hands, we sell, and then we use the money to try and develop the party. Hopefully when Nigerians start to see what we are doing, they will believe in what we are doing and they will start to support us. It doesn't even have to be with money. You can put billboards up for us, you can give us offices, you can do flyers and t-shirts. You don't have to necessarily bring cash if you are worried about whether you can trust the people or not. You can actually do things on our behalf. You know, okay, madam, this is the thing. You better say that true, say you're serious about Nigeria. Maybe we'll help you take uh, that bus I give unto you. Maybe I take and they do this campaign thing. Those are all ways that you can contribute to our vision. And it's, it will be really highly appreciated. So we know that it's a tough process when there's no money. But tough or not, we're not giving up. We have started and we are, every day we know that we are progressing. And we'll definitely get where we're going to. And what we're going to is to bring true democracy to Nigeria. Okay, there we have it. Let's have a quick break and we'll be right back. Girls, close it. Alright guys, welcome people. We're back right now. How do we say welcome in one other language? What language? Okay. No. Okay. Spanish. No. I have no idea. German. Okay. French. Uh, God, people like that. Um, Bienvenue in French. Okay. Uh, Bienvenue. Uh, in German. <laughs> German. Herzlich uh, willkommen. <laughs> I'm lost. <laughs> That's on behalf of everybody. Yes, that's not the point. Okay. Okay. Um, I think from what we've heard. Bienvenue in French in Spanish. Okay. I think from what we've heard, um, you own the first pol online political party. Yeah, I, I must commend you on that. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of fun, like that's inspiring. Yeah. The first of its kind in Nigeria to say, okay. Now I'll say something the other time that it's not about a political party. Like most people will say, they said they voted Buari, not because they wanted the APC, but because they wanted the world change. So they were tired of that particular regime. So they go, for, they went for Buari. Now we are all tired of the PDP and the LPC because of the drama. We are all tired. Mm -hmm. So you get, now you tell us what you as a person, this is not even about your party, what you as a person are bringing to the table, your plans and everything for Nigeria. It's not about the political party. Um, what I am bringing to the table that is unique is transparency and accountability because we've never had that in Nigeria and that is the crux of all our problems in this country. Our people are not accountable to us and then they are not transparent about what's happening with our resources. We don't know, we actually don't really know how much we make and we actually don't really know how much we spend. Forget all this budget thing they tell you every day. All of those are cooked up figures. We actually do not know how our country is doing. And that's because the government we have had up till now, from day one, not just the last one, but always, they are very, very interested in keeping the real information away from us so that they can have an easy way to steal what is the common uh, resources of the whole people of Nigeria. So what I'm bringing to the table is a transparent government, a government that is highly accountable, that makes sure that the people can follow every revenue and also follow every expenditure. So money that is coming in, you know exactly where it's coming from. And as it is going out, you know exactly where it's going to. So even when you award contracts, you make it public who you awarded contracts to, how much the contracts were worth, what they were supposed to achieve with the contracts funds. And then put it open for Nigerians to be able to follow. And then they'll follow, okay, well, they gave him one billion to build bridge. The bridge he has built is not up to 100 million. And then they can start asking questions. If you make it open for every Nigerian who is in Interested, to be able to follow our money and find out exactly where it's coming from and where it's going to. People will not even confidently steal anymore. Talk, talk less of all this looting that we have billion billion in somebody's, uh, 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 or somebody's house. You will, you, will not, you will not have those kind of behavior because every holes will be plugged. And then you are accountable to the people. You are able to like pick any area, any area of the economy, any part of Nigeria, break down what is happening there, and then let the people be answerable. If you elect, uh, uh, I, for example, as president, you'll be able to reach me on Twitter, on, on Instagram, by email, any, any way you feel like, okay, this woman is not performing, let me go and tell her myself. You are able to. And then I will listen, I will check what you're saying, and I will look for ways to make amends. And then every other person that is in the government it's also available and accessible to the people so that whenever people are doing the wrong things, we're able to like put them back on track. 
We need that in Nigeria because if we don't have that, all this one we are saying is just talks. We're not going to move forward. We need to be able to give this country an opportunity to start healing. And you can do that by making sure that everything is open. People who are working for the country should be able to answer to the country. Okay, this is what you are doing. This is how we are doing it. This is what it's costing us. And this is how we are making sure that the money comes together. Okay, believe me, we've had people tell us the same thing all the time, like the manifestos and all that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I don't want to mention names or any particular government, mm -hmm. but, you know, in this country, we've had regimes where the president is willing to help, but the people surrounded by him care otherwise. Who chose the people surrounding him? He did. Should, okay, that's it. You have to choose the right people because it's not just you. The president is only one person. He's listening to thousands of people and he's making decisions based on what those thousands of people are telling him. If you surround yourself with thousands of thieves, you're wasting your time as president. If you surround yourself with thousands of liars, one good luck. <laughs> Do you understand? But if you surround yourself with thousands of committed, patriotic Nigerians who are as desperate as you are to help this country move forward, that is the beginning of your success as the president. Okay. And that's what I'm going to be doing. Yeah, I just decided to chip in that so that it so don't be just you. Yeah, yeah, showing us that. If with everyone that we're no, working, it can to... never be just you. If it's just you, your boss will not have this flip team. No, what I'm saying is, <laughs> no, seriously, no, it can never be just you in the sense that, like, you you are not the only one that have this patriotic patriotism and all that yeah. like, committed. There are like, millions, millions of Nigerians who have that, but they are not the ones in the center. They are not the ones that are called together to move the country forward. The people who are called together are the thieves, the ex-convicts, the ex-traffickers <laughs> and human beings. There was one that they said was even actually still consistently trafficking humans, but already got a ticket to fly under the APC party. You see, no, it's not even as if they are ex they are currently criminals, but they are the ones in our parliament, they are the ones in our judiciary, they are the ones in our ministries, they are the ones taking care of our civil service. Remove those elements and replace with, at least in the, in the top, top, top seats, replace with patriotic Nigerians, drawn from every part of this country, who are committed and experts in whatever field you are calling them to deal with. And then watch this country. All right, just before we take this away from politics a bit, we're going to take it away to feminism, we're going to take it away to, you know, trending issues. But I just got one question I need to ask. Yes. Frequently asked questions, um, people have been asking, like, what are your political positions you've held before? That why not go for governorships, um, senatorial? Like, okay, what do you have to say about that? I didn't prepare for those things. I didn't prepare to be local government chairman. I didn't prepare to be councillor. I didn't prepare to be senate. I didn't prepare to be governor. I didn't prepare to be... I only prepared for the presidency. Coming out. I absolutely <laughs> took my time to look at all the things I can do for this country, the best way I can serve my country. And I saw that I can only do it very well from the centre. Yeah. I'm not the kind of person you put in the corner and then, of course, I can thrive there, but I know I'll be much more useful to this country from the center and I prepared for that and that's what I'm doing so I don't have to go to the local government or the state whatever or whatever because that's not what my talent is that's not what my skill sets are for I have absolutely programmed my mind and my activities my strategies our teams we've programmed ourselves to go for the presidency and we know that we have adopted a strategy that will make it possible so why do we have to throw that away? Because some people think you have to start small. Everybody is not meant to start small. Some of us are built to start from the very top. To take the, the yeah. pull by, by that Absolutely. point. Absolutely. <laughs> so Biola, I guess you've been, you've been having this kind of facial expression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Ma. Yes. Um, it's about about um, a popular media personality, Tuke Makewa. There is this picture she shared on her Instagram page a few days ago, mm. where she posts nude mm. to sell her product, her brand. So what lane do you think a woman can go to promote that brand? As a woman, right? Yeah. Whatever yeah. length your sense of value, whatever your personal acceptance is, I have no issues with you. I'm not the moralist kind of person that will come and impose my idea of right on you. We are all human beings and we all have different senses of right and wrong. And none of us is right and none of us is wrong. It's for you to look within yourself, look at whatever, if you are the God-fearing type, look at what you believe your God wants of you. If you are the atheist type, look at what you feel society expects of you. Judge yourself yourself, and then whatever you are doing, be comfortable in it, I'm happy with you. I can never judge anybody, because I'm sure there are places where you will see what I'll do, and you're like, ah, 
How can she behave like that? <laughs> no, nobody is perfect and nobody knows it all. And that thing that works for you may not work for the next person. So she's going off naked. Mm, I won't go off naked, but if she's comfortable going off naked to sell her goods, wow, good. Yeah, for me, it's actually a very brave thing to do. How many of us like our bodies enough to come and open it? Mm. It's a brief thing to do, so I, I will not judge her, I will not abuse her. In fact, I'd rather clap for her because, wow. She's doing her thing, right? She's doing her thing and she's proud of doing her thing. All right, Mom, can you be called or would you allow yourself to be called a feminist? No. I'm not a feminist. Right. Okay. And what because your take on feminism? <laughs> I don't have a take on feminism. It's a very uh, huge movement, it's a huge idea and there are different aspects of feminism there are different thoughts there are different meanings of feminism for different people if i can call 50 women in here now and men too because there are quite a lot of feminist men too and they will all give you 50 different definitions of feminism yeah. so it's not um I, I don't have anything against feminists or the feminist movement but i am not feminist simply because i do not approach issues from a woman point of view i am not the kind of person that when there's a problem i come in there and i'm feeling oh this side is disadvantaged come from that side and start helping them first i don't think like that if i see a problem the first thing i'm thinking about is oh, what are all the issues involved sometimes the men are the disadvantaged ones sometimes the boys uh, the, the children are the disadvantaged or sometimes the women are the disadvantaged ones it's fine for me because it doesn't come from the point of view of I am a woman and I need to fight more for the women or mostly for the women or from the angle of the women. I don't do things that way. I really go, we are all human beings. We all have equal rights in the, in the presence of the law. And we need to tackle issues from a really equal point of view. Feminists don't really do that. Feminists generally look at things from balancing rights in favor of the women or at least trying to get the women to become at par. So there's an angle they usually come with and sometimes it may not necessarily be correct for that particular issue. So for me, I don't even want to be identified as feminist. I don't want to tell my mind, you need to think in terms of what's going to favor the women first. You need to think in terms of how it is badly, uh, 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 how the women are so badly disadvantaged and all that. It is important don't get me wrong, but I am not programmed to work that way. I'm programmed to go from a very neutral point of view and then start bringing in solutions, ideas, or suggestions about the way forward. I'm not feminist. I know for sure I'm not feminist. Yeah, okay. Okay. okay, you should know what, uh, for me, I think feminism is all about like um, advocacy for equality. Especially for women. Okay. I'm not okay, arguing but, with you. Okay, I'm, I'm not, time right I'm not, not arguing I'm not saying I'm not <laughs> Right now, I'll be sitting on the fence. No, I'm, I'm not arguing with you. I'm not saying I'm not a feminist. I love my feminist friends. A lot of my family members, some of my best friends in the world are feminists. In fact, when this whole thing was the rave of, of, of the, the, the talk of the moment, so many of them wrote me, oh, mama, you are messing up. You are more than feminist. You are the most feminist person we know. I'm like, no, 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 no. Don't mistake my independence for feminism. I don't do things because I'm a woman. I do things because that's what I think is right. By law, by my morals, by my values. That's what, that's what drives me, not feminism. If I'm fighting, I'm fighting for everybody equally. Not necessarily fighting with you just because you're a man and then ignoring the, the uh, sorry, because you're a woman and then ignoring the man because he's not my problem. No, if I come in here and you are misbehaving to my guy, then I'll beat you up if I can. If I can't beat you up, I'll call somebody that can beat you up. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. So because you're a woman, you now come out, no, no, no. Or you now, he, his brother is messing around because he can't. I won't let him. Or my dad or my mom. Or like, I don't come from the point of view of being a woman. I truly come from the point of view of being a human being and every human being deserves to be fought for. Okay. okay. I think uh, we're getting it wrong somewhere. From my own part of view, I think we're getting it wrong in the sense that feminism should be advocacy for equality. But not when but we're taking it the extra No, 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 no. But I think most people, like, calling themselves feminists, they are getting it wrong. Okay. I don't I think... want to comment on that <laughs> because as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> nobody is getting it wrong. Everybody's getting it right. Just, just that everybody levels. on different <laughs> levels, different points of views, different ways of expression. Some I agree with, some I don't. But at the end of the day, who am I? Eunice is not a feminist, for sure. Okay, Eunice is not a feminist. But can we say Eunice, like, she's actually enjoying... Let <laughs> 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 Okay, that looks one. That looks one. Okay. Okay. Okay, so say this is enjoying the lipo or outcome of feminism. 
in the sense that you coming out right now to say okay, I want to, I'm aspiring, I want to be president in Nigeria as a first of its kind. Stand out like outcome of feminist like shouting. Yeah, because the yeah. closest yeah. to presidency yeah. was actually in 2015, yeah. and this is 2018. So yes. I think I get where she's coming from. So like, like so you know, shouting women should lead, lead women yeah. as, as the feminist, that's their own part. So can we say she is not a feminist, but she's enjoying. Oh, the the wings, right? The <laughs> only thing I am enjoying is the constitutional rights bestowed upon me as a Nigerian. And our constitution from day one always gave us equal rights with the men. I'm not enjoying any other rights. So <laughs> no matter what you want to tell me about what you're doing and how much advocacy you're doing in your group, the bottom line is that the law took care of me from day one. Many of us don't even know that. Many of us listen to what the churches are telling us, what the monks are telling us, what our dads are telling us, what our moms are telling us, what the traditional behavior and the conventions around us are. And then we are... We are feeling so disadvantaged, believing that the system is against us. But the truth is, the system, the laws in this country, they are so pro-feminist, uh, pro, 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 pro female, pro women. Like okay. it is so, according to the laws, no difference between a man and a woman in Nigeria. Everything you see is a product is a product of artificial infiltration by our people. Cultural. Cultural behavior, religious behavior, the patriarchal system that we have adopted for like centuries. But in fighting to be recognized and for those rights to be implemented, I don't need to do it from a feminist point of view. Look at me, I'm here now. I'm always negotiating with all these top flight politicians and, uh, and owners and uh, um, uh, chairman of political parties. I don't go there from I'm a feminist point of view. No, I go there from a point of view like, Oga, I should get your own party where they represent. Now, so me said, get my own party where they represent. For here now, you and I we are equal. So calm down and let's talk. <laughs> Do you understand? If I go there as a feminist, nobody will listen to me because they'll be wondering what's wrong with this person. Do you understand? Okay. But they see that, look, I know my rights. I know where the law protects me. I know how the law protects me. I don't need to be feminist to get anything done. I can get everything done by just following what the law says. And they're beginning to recognize it, and they're beginning to appreciate it, and they're beginning to listen. All right, so taking a bit further, let's talk about personal issues. Okay. I know this is quite interesting uh -huh. because I'm a lady, you know, uh -huh. getting to that point. But quickly, let's take a short break, and we'll be right back.